Okay, so just now we have seen that example 5, this is your example 5, right. So just reading once again the problem, an overhead transmission line at a river crossing is supported uh, from two towers at heights of 30 meter and 70 meter above the water level. The horizontal distance between the tower is 250 meter. If the required clearance between the conductors and the water midway between the tower is 45 meter and if both the towers are on the same side of the point of maximum sag, find the tension in the conductor. The weight of the conductor is given 0.8 kg per meter, right. So, th this is actually uh, that, uh, that, that your what you call the diagram. So, this is that uh, point A and point B and from the water level midpoint height is 45 meter and from here to here is 30 meter and from here to here it is 70 meter. So, we are assuming that it is a parabolic uh, configuration. So, length L is given here the 250 meters, right and S1 is 30 meters, say S2 is the 70 meter and this is the water level and W is 0.8 kg per meter, right. Therefore, uh, the, this, uh, this one your uh, what you call then just hold on, then this one is the difference in level between the support H is equal to 70 minus 30, 40 meter and note that both the towers on the same side of the point of minimum sag, if it is set, so that means x1 is a negative, right. Later we will see. So, using equation 61, in equation 61 it was given h is equal to w upon 2 t x 2 square minus x 1 square. As x was in negative, that means x 1 plus x 2 is equal to L, this we have seen earlier also, right. So, that means x 2 is equal to L minus x 1. So, you put here x 2 is equal to L minus x 1 and simplify then your h will be w l w into capital L of course, divided by 2 t into l minus 2 x 1. So, this is say equation 1, right. Therefore, the for points a and b the difference is h is equal to 40 meter, because one is your 70 meter height point b and point a is 40 meter from the your what you call 30 meters from the your uh, water level, so your river water level. So, difference is 70 minus 30 is equal to 40 meter, right. So, therefore, this you substitute all the values 0 0.8 into 250 upon 2 t, 250 minus 2 x 1 is equal to 40. Therefore, uh, this equation you can write 250 minus 2 x 1 upon t is equal to 0 0.4. I mean, you simplify right in this form, this is equation 2. Uh, for points A and P, the midpoint uh, from the water level is 45. So, difference between them that point A and point P and point A is 45 minus 30. So, 15 meter. This is also it, it is also given in this uh, diagram. In this uh, in this uh, diagram it is just hold on. In this diagram it is given. This is this is the diagram. Here it is given. Everything is given. Right. And horizontal distance between A and P that is 2 feet because it is midpoint this p is midpoint and horizontal distance will be between a and p that is between a and p the horizontal distance i mean if you if you make a, a dash line that is between this distance uh, this distance from here to here if i make this is your say a dash and this is your say p dash that is the horizontal distance a p dash this is the midpoint so naturally total is 250 so it will be 250 by 2 so 125 meter and again you substitute in this equation it will be 0 0.8 upon 1 into 125 upon 2 t is equal to 125 minus 2 x 1 is equal to 15. That is again we are using the same equation, right. And that means you can write 125 minus 2 x 1 upon t is equal to 0 0.3. Solve, then you will get t is equal to 1250 kg. And this is x 1 is equal to, as you said, x 1 will become negative. So, if you solve for x 1 also, it is coming minus 125 meter, right. So, Next, we will take another, 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 another example that example 6, just hold on, this is your example 6. So, here it is says that an overhead line is supported on two towers, they are 30 meter apart, right, having a difference in level of 10 meter, that means they are not at the same level. The conductor radius is 1 centimeter and weight is 2.3 kg per meter. So, you have to determine the sag at the lower support when the line is subject to wind pressure of 55 kg per meter square that is P of the projected area. The maximum strength of copper coil or 
of copper is given as 422 into 10 to the power 5 kg per meter square and factor of safety is given 2.3 right. So, you have to find out the sag at the lower support when the line is subjected to all sort of things right. So, factor of safety is given 2.3. Now, span length is given this is 300 meter. So, span length is given. So, L is equal to 300 meter weight of the conductor is also given that is your 2.3 kg per meter right. Radius of the conductor is given 1 centimeter and diameter of the conductor will be then 2 centimeter just uh, that is the diameter of the conductor. Now, now using equation 80 all things have been derived equation 80 F is equal to this formula D C upon 100 into P kg per meter. P is given 55 kg per meter square right therefore, and D C is equal to we have seen 2 centimeter. So, F is equal to 2 by 100 into 55 kg per meter. So, this will be 1.1 kg per meter right. Now, equation 83 right we know W is equal to F square plus W square this is W e this is your W and this is your F right. So, W e will be root over F square plus W square this is equation 83 this values I have put after calculating only right. Then if you calculate W e F is your F is your 1.1 right it is computed here and your W is 2.3 kg per meter that is also known to you. So, it will be root over 1.1 square plus 2.3 square this will become 2.55 kg per meter. So, it is 2.55 kg per meter the resultant one. Now, cross section area of the conductor A c it is pi d c square by 4. So, pi into 2 square upper 4 centimeter square it is 3.142 centimeter square converted to meter square. So, it will be 3.142 into 10 to the power minus 4 meter square right this is the cross sectional area of the conductor. Now, allowable tension now directly you can calculate right it is give factor of safety is given 2.3. So, it is given 4 422 into 10 to the power 5 kg per meter square this is the data given that your maximum tensile strength 422 into 10 to the power 5 kg per meter square. Therefore, it will be 422 into 10 to the power 5 into the cross sectional area is 3.142 into 10 to the power minus 4 meter square cross sectional area divided by factor of safety 2.3 is kg is equal to 5764.88 kg. Now, distance of the lowest point of the conductor that is your if you go, go to figure 5 just hold on just right this is figure this is uh, go back to your figure 5 this is figure 5 right supports at different levels. So, here the distance of lowest point of conductor O this is this one this is the lowest point of the conductor in figure 5 O from the support at your uh, lower level A can be obtained using 65 equation 65. So, equation 65 we have derived x 1 is equal to L by 2 minus H T upon W E into L. So, difference in level of support H is equal to 10 meter because in the problem it is because in the problem it is it is given that your uh, this thing it is that overhead support 300 meter apart having a difference level of difference in level of 10 meter this 10 meter is given in the problem. Therefore, difference in level of support is H is equal to 10 meter. Therefore, x 1 is equal to 300 by 2 minus 10 into 5764 this one the tension 0.88 divided by 2.5 that is uh, 55 W e into L is equal to 300 meter. So, x 1 you will get 74.65 meter right for unequal support sag at lower level can be calculated using equation 58. So, 58 equation is d 1 is equal to w e into x 1 square upon 2 t. So, w e is 2.55 kg per meter x 1 just we have obtained 74.65 per meter and t is equal to 5764.88 kg. Therefore, d 1 is equal to 2.55 into 74.65 whole square divided by 2 into 5764.88 right. So, d 1 is coming 1.32 meter. Uh, now, therefore, vertical sag will be d 1 cos theta that means, this one this this project this resultant to your force diagram this is your theta that is basically in between resultant w e and the weight of the conductor w. So, this is actually if you take find out cos theta that uh, w upon w e that is your theta will come 25.6 degrees. So, vertical sag will be d 1 cos theta that is 1.232 into your 2.3 by 2.55 that is actually 
your cos 2 or the 5.6 degree. Anyway, I have written like this. So, that is actually 1.311 meter approximately, right? This is the vertical sag. So, problems are simple actually, just little bit practice is necessary. Now, take another example. Uh, all the theories initially we have done. So, this way after that uh, all, all, all supported by all the examples. Now, here also an overhead transmission line conductor having weight 1.16 kg per meter, diameter is 1.7 centimeter and ultimate strength is 32 into 10 to the power 6 kg per meter square. Right. When erected between supports 300 meter apart, that means two towers or poles they are 300 meter apart and having 12 meter difference in uh, height that is h is equal to 12 meter. This is given determine the sag with respect to the taller of the two support right. A conductor was loaded due to 1 kg of ice per meter and factor of safety is given 2 right. So, here we are conduct considering that that ice coating on the conductor. Now, span length is given that is L is equal to capital L is equal to 300 meter. W is given 1.16 kg per meter and W i is equal to 1 kg per meter right. This is the weight of the conductor. The total weight W t is equal to W plus W i. So, W is 1.16 and W i the weight of the ice per k 1 kg per meter. So, it is plus 1 that is 2.16 kg per meter. So, difference in level of two support is given h is equal to 12 meter this h is equal to 12 meter is given. So, diameter of the conductor is given d c is equal to your 1.7 centimeter these are given these are the data right. Now, cross section area uh, is equal to a c pi by 4 d c square right this is just without uh, ice formation right. So, a c is equal to pi by 4 1.7 square converted to meter square into 10 to the power minus 4 meter square this is 2.27 into 10 to the power minus 4 meter square. Now, factor of safety is given to and ultimate tensile strength is given 32 into 10 to the power 6 uh, kg per meter square. Therefore, allowable tension T will be 32 into 10 to the power 6, then the cross sectionally you multiply in meter per meter square that is 2.27 into 10 to the power minus 4 divided by factor of 72 kg that is T is equal to 3632 kg. Right. Now, distance of the lowest point of the conductor from the taller support can be obtained using equation 66. This all we have derived x 1, x 2 all we have derived right. So, x 2 is equal to L by 2 capital L by 2 plus h into t upon w t into L. This is from equation 66 just to go through this uh, derivation once that is all. So, it is 300 by 2 plus h is 12 difference is 12 uh, into 3632 that is the t this one divided by 2.16 that is w into L 300 right that is coming x 2 is equal to 217.26 meter this is x 2 right. So, vertical sag can be obtained using using equation 59 we have seen that d 2 vertical sag will be w 2 x 2 square upon 2 t. So, it is w t 2.16 x 2 is 217.26 it is square divided by 2 into 3632 that is a 10 cent t that is 14.03 meter. So, problem is very simple right. So, now Next one is that your uh, uh, an overhead transmission line right has a span of uh, 300 meter right ultimate strength is 600 kg and factor of safety is 2. So, if the sag is 2 meter sag is given. So, you have to find out a the weight of the conductor and b length of the line this is a simple one. So, span length is given 300 meter. So, this allowable tension t this should be always your mind that if ultimate strength is given there must be some factor of safety will be given. So, ultimately allowable tension will be ultimate your what you call strength divided by factor of safety right. So, that is ultimate strength is 600 uh, sorry 6000 and factor of safety is 2 it is given. So, it is 6000 by 2 is equal to your 3000 kg right that is T. Now, from equation 55 sag expression is written as d is equal to w l square upon 8 t this we have seen in equation 55. Therefore, d is given 2 meter l is given 300 meter t is given 300 kg. So, you will get solve you substitute all w into 300 square divided by 8 into 3000 is equal to 2. So, w will get 0.533 kg per meter. Now, weight of the conductor therefore, 0.533 kg per meter. Now, b 
you have to find out length of the line. Length of the line can be obtained using 57. So, you go to equations 57, it is derived as small l is equal to capital L 1 plus 8d square upon 3l square. L is the horizontal distance between the towers and small l is the length of the conductor that we have seen. right? Therefore, capital L is 300 and 1 plus 8 into d 2 square because d is given to divided by 3 into capital L square that is 300 square. So, approximately it becomes small l becomes 300 meter. The reason is it is approximate one uh, right approximate one it will be 300 point 0 something right 0 0 something. Why I have written that means your sag is very small it is given 2 meter and that is why that horizontal length and the length of the conductor l almost close to your 300 l l 1 l right. So, but if you make it uh, it will find point 0 0 something 300 point 0 0 something, but after that is why the horizontal distance and length of the conductor they are very close to each other right because sag is very small 2 meter only that is why uh, this problem is taken. Next one is and the last example for this one is that example 9. So, here the calculate the sag and vertical sag of a transmission line having conductor having conductor is diameter of 0.93 centimeter right weight of the conductor is 0.6 kg per meter and breaking strength 2000 kg assuming a factor of safety 2 whenever factor of safety will be given uh, the breaking strain means ultimate tensile strain so that means this one tension has to be found out to this one divided by factor of safety right and span length is given 200 meter and right uh, so, uh, and, and support and supports at the same level right they are at the same level. So, no question of difference of uh, your tower uh, height level right. The line is subjected to wind pressure 40 kg per meter square of the projected area. The radial thickness of the ice is given 1.25 centimeter that means your uh, ice uh, radial thickness is also given wind pressure is also given and weight of the ice is 912 kg per meter cube. So, you have to find out that uh, your sag and the vertical sag both. Now, capital L is given that is your uh, 200 meter and W is equal to 0 0.6 kg per meter. So, weight of the ice per meter length can be obtained using equation 73. So, equation 73 have seen weight of the ice W i is equal to W c pi into T 1 in bracket D c plus T 1 into 10 to the power minus 4 kg per meter this is from equation 73. So, T 1 is given that is your 1.25 centimeter, D c is given 0.93 centimeter and W c is given that is your 912 kg per meter cube right. Therefore, W i is equal to 900 your uh, 912 into pi into 1.25 into bracket 0.93 plus 1.25 into 10 to the power minus 4 kg per meter. Therefore, W i will be 0 0.7807 kg per meter that is that weight weight of the ice per meter length of the conductor that is 0 0.7807 kg per meter. Therefore, W t is equal to W plus W i is equal to 0 0.6 plus 0 0.7807 kg. Hence, W t the total 1.3807 kg per meter. After that the problem is very simple right. So, in the your after this one that your horizontal force due to wind pressure can be obtained using equation your 82 right. So, equation 82 here I then we can write equation 82 here that is your F is equal to D c plus 2 T 1 upon 100 into P kg per meter this is equation 82. So, P is given 40 kg per meter square F is given 0 0.93 plus 2 into your uh, your uh, F is you have to calculate. So, it is D c 0 0.93 plus 2 into 1.25 by 100 into P is 40 kg per meter hence F is equal to 1.372 kg per meter. Now, effective load acting on the conductor can be obtained as using equation 83. This we have seen W e is equal to root over F square plus W plus W i basically it is a W t W plus W i square that is W e is equal to root over F square plus W t square. F is equal to just we have calculated 1.372. So, root over 1.372 square plus W t is 1.3807 square. So, W e is equal to 1.946 kg per meter. So, we effective effective weight of the conductor we got. Now, this one now factor of safety is given 2 
that means T is equal to 2000 by 2 that is 1000 kg. Therefore, sag this, uh, this formula for this one W e L square upon 80 this you know we have derived already. So, W is 1.946 into 200 square that is L horizontal uh, span length right and divided by 8 into 1000 it will come 9.73 meter. So, therefore, vertical sag will be d cos theta just we have seen d into cos theta will be W t upon W e. So, 9.73 into 1.3807 divided by 1.946 is equal to 6.9035 meter. So, with this that sag and tension these 9 examples we have taken and uh, your what you call this will help you a lot right. Next before closing the sag and tension chapter. So, little bit of uh, little bit of thing is there that you call Eolian vibration or resonant vibration of the conductor right. Generally overhead conductors will subject to normal swinging in wind that we know right because wind is always blowing uh, in at, at some speed right and apart from that may subject to vibration known as Eolian vibration or resonant vibration right. So, this may happen that uh, this may happen that that, but this kind of vibration resonant vibration or Eolian vibrations right have two low very low amplitude maximum may be 0.5 centimeter or so that means very low and at and at high frequencies that is in between 50 to 100 hertz. These are actually caused by the by the vortex phenomena in the low wind speed right. So, that is 10 to 30 kilometer power hour. So, this wind speed is a low wind speed. So, empirical formula of frequency is given by it is an empirical formula that 50 into u upon d c say this is equation 85, where u is the wind velocity kilometer per hour right and d c is diameter of conductor in millimeter right. So, the length of a loop that is half wave length right depends on tension t and conductor wave w and is given by lambda is equal to 1 upon 2 f root over t upon w. This one you please keep it in your mind that lambda is equal to 1 upon 2 f root over t upon w. So, this is equation 86 right. So, if wind velocity say u is equal to 30 kilometer per uh, 30 kilometer per hour and conductor diameter d c is 3 centimeter say that is equal to 30 millimeter then f is equal to 50 into 30 upon 30 it will be 50 hertz again right. The just uh, just uh, for assumption some data we have taken the conductor will vibrate that means at about 50 hertz frequency. Now, if T is equal to for example, say 5096 or 0 0.84 kg is approximately is equal to 50 kilo Newton and W is equal to 1.6 kg per meter then loop length will be 1.8 meter because here using this formula using this formula right using this formula put T put W put F then you will get that your that your loop length that is lambda 1.8 meter right. So, these vibration are very common to all conductors and are always present right because wind always will blow and some your what you call some vortex phenomena will be there. Since these vibration are small in magnitude, but these are not that harmful, but the ACSR conductor right has high di your diameter to weight ratio and is subject to fatigue by this vibration. So, now, next is, is that uh, this figure 7 uh, sorry figure 17 a stock bridge damper as shown in figure 7 is used to minimize this vibration. Many times in overhead line you can see some kind of thing right. So, it comprises of two masses right uh, at the end of the short length of stranded steel cable suspended from the conductor about midway between two points it is a, we call it a midway between two points we call it node of the vibrations right. So, movement of the damper is caused by the vibration and energy is absorbed by the inner strand friction in the steel cable right. So, details uh, are uh, not required for this course then we have to go for detailed mathematics. So, better uh, not uh, suitable for uh, this course at least right Jumps just just some general ideas right. But the length of a typical damper is about 60 centimeter and weighs about 5 kg or more occasionally you can see this kind of thing in a transmission line and another is the galloping or dancing of conductor. This is the last thing for the sag and tension. So, these vibration are of at low frequency that is uh, 0.25 to 2 hertz right. So, this is galloping or dancing of conductor. 
So, and high amplitude, amplitude is very high up to 6 meter right and are uh, generally caused by asymmetrical layer of ice formation. Particularly this happens that uh, when ice coating are there around the conductor, but it is not uh, it is not uh, your what you call uniform around the conductor. So, this actually cause that your uh, galloping or dancing of the conductors. So, this vibration actually is self excited type. When the ice coated conductor is acted upon a right uh, your light deep twin particularly where the ground slopes at right angles to the transmission line vibration is initiated because wind travels actually up the slope and appears to get underneath the conductor. Actually this that this uh, this galloping is creates because of this reason right. So, the stranding of conductor significantly contributes to this vibration particularly during your know, asymmetrical ice coating. This vibration may cause flashover between conductors I mean if they are uh, vertically uh, placed right I mean instead of horizontal configuration if their configuration is vertical then there is a possibility of flashover because uh, there is a strong possibility uh, and it is difficult to prevent this vibration but horizontal configuration of transmission line can be used to reduce the impact of galloping or dancing of conductor. So, in hilly areas that your horizontal uh, configuration uh, of conductor is preferable then you are what you call that uh, vertical space uh, vertical spacing. So, with this with this that sag and tension chapter will be over your job will be to go through all the derivations particularly that your what you call when towers at, at a different height right rather than equal height and uh, second thing is that uh, ice formation as well as that wind pressure when you are considering all sort of things and little bit you have to keep it in your mind I mean formulas and other things because uh, for the exam purpose you have to store everything in your memories. So, things are very simple, but, uh, uh, but uh, you will find uh, your uh, what you call these are very interesting. If you have any, any other question or anything you send me mail or put the question in the forum we will try to answer all of your questions. Thank you again we will be back again.